It's five on your side at six. Focused on you. We begin tonight with new details about a weekend decision to cancel the historic 13 carnival at Washington University. Five on your side is speaking with students who left Saturday night after multiple fights broke out. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Ann Allred. The largest student-run carnival in the country had to be canceled because a number of small fights on the carnival's second day. Annie Crawl is live near the university after speaking with students who were there when it happened. Annie. Imagine you're a freshman here at WashU and you've been hearing about this centuries old carnival for so long. Then you arrive on the scene at Saturday night and you see a flood of people running toward you in terror. Well, that was how the two freshmen felt who I spoke to this morning, unsure of what next year will look like for the carnival. And that is where we tell their story. There was so much confusion and panic and people were just running in masses the other way. A supposed to be magical place quickly unraveled on Saturday night after multiple fights broke out at Wash U's 13 Carnival. Canceled for only the third time in its history. The former two reasons, the COVID pandemic and the start of World War II. Saturday, Wash U and St. Louis Metropolitan Police had to be called in and the carnival was closed early. Then canceled altogether Sunday after Wash U put out a statement saying it was necessary to prevent an unfortunate situation from becoming worse. Sad news for even the grad students in Wash U's architectural program who wanted to go. Everyone was pumped about it. I mean, one of my friends, uh, she actually put like her swim team put like 400 bucks for like one of the seats and then it got canceled. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of people were pretty pissed about it. Freshman Issa Wilson said she'd be hesitant to come back to the carnival next year. It's kind of sad that we don't know what happened because they posted something about it and it was so vague. It was like, oh yeah, there's three gang fights because apparently there's a bunch of gangs there because it's open to the public, which I didn't even know about. Like they didn't tell us it was open to the public to my understanding. Ride tickets from the carnival discarded on the ground Monday. The students discussed that if the carnival is back to full capacity next year, there is a chance it could be closed to the public. I'm personally against that. I think I like the community aspect and I don't think a few bad actors should ruin like the fun for everybody because I know a lot of people had a great time. And in the last few hours, we've gotten confirmation from the St. Louis Zoo that says it was a group of young people with those fights at the carnival on Saturday night who plan to continue their actions at the zoo or near the zoo the following day. Zoo security says they were able to prevent more fights from happening on Sunday and in Forest Park after a very unexpected weekend. Reporting live at Wash U, Annie Crawl, five on your side. A man is dead after being hit by a truck in Jefferson County. This happened early this morning on Highway 30 in Cedar Hill near Northwest High School. Police identify the victim as Norman MacArthur. They say he was standing in traffic when a pickup truck hit him. They say the driver of the truck didn't see the man and was unable to avoid him in time. Police in St. Louis are trying to identify a man found dead under an overpass on Interstate 55. Officers found the man's body this morning while investigating an abandoned vehicle that had been blocking the roadway. When EMS workers arrived on the scene, they pronounced him dead. The incident, we're told, is not considered suspicious and the man is not connected with the abandoned vehicle. This man is accused of causing the crash that critically injured a nine-year-old boy. Police say Kevin Johnson was driving a truck that caused the crash in Hickey Park yesterday. Crews responded to the crash and found the boy pinned between a truck and his family's car. They say Johnson ran off and then later turned himself into police. He's now facing endangering the welfare of a child and assault charges. Police say the boy was helping load his family's car when the crash happened. A trial began today for a man accused of murdering a St. Louis police officer. Thomas Kenworthy's attorney admitted during opening statements this morning her client's guilty. Our Christine Byers explains why they told jurors that he shouldn't go to prison for it. Officer Tamara Bohannon was just 29 years old when he was gunned down by a man who had barricaded himself in a stranger's home in the Tower Grove South neighborhood. It was August of 2020. During opening statements Monday morning, prosecutors described Bohannon's character to the jury. Officer Bohannon was a dedicated police officer. You'll hear that. He was husband to his wife, Alexis. He was a father. 
Kenworthy's public defenders are arguing he should be found not guilty by reason of mental defect. Now, law experts tell us that's a high bar to meet. I'm going to tell you something that the defense doesn't normally say in an opening statement. We admit it. We admit that Tommy did the things that night. What happened that night is simply not in dispute. What we're here for is why it happened. Kinworthy began rocking in his chair as his attorney told the jury about his traumatic childhood and mental illness. And the reason why these things happened that night is because Tommy suffers from a serious mental illness, a mental illness called schizoaffective disorder. Bohannon's widow was the first witness prosecutors called to the stand. She wept when shown a photo taken of him shortly after he died, and prosecutors ended their questioning. Christine Byers, five on your side. Thomas Kinworthy is also facing charges related to the shootings of two other people that day, including another police officer who survived. A local Marine is dead, killed during a training accident in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Sergeant Colin Arslambos is a 2019 graduate of Fort Zumwalt West High School. The Pentagon says he worked in the Maritime Special Purpose Force and has been a Marine since 2020. He had just been promoted on April 1st. Thursday's accident is under investigation. Tonight, a century-old school is being forced to close. St. Monica in Creve Coeur is the latest Catholic school on the chopping block. Our Justina Cornell has reaction from this recent news and joins us live from the school. Justina. Well, lots of emotions with this decision. Now, earlier today, I spoke to the school board president and a parent, and both tell me that they're shocked and saddened by this news. There was anger. There was uh, frustration. There was, um, I felt betrayed. Concerned and confused by the closure of St. Monica Catholic School. My, my seventh grader, right? So, you know, 13 years old, and she came to me and she goes, Daddy, what can we do? It's the latest school shutting down as part of the All Things New plan, a restructuring plan by the Archdiocese. Our pastor, Father Sebastian, said to the Archbishop, no, I want to stay open, and, and it was ultimately the Archbishop's decision. Families received this letter on Friday. It noted the school's challenge of low enrollment. The Archdiocese sent a statement in part saying, the trend means that continuing to provide quality education at St. Monica School would require support that would negatively impact the parish's finances and impede other crucial parish ministries. August um, of last year, Diocese came in and let us know that there was potential that the school wouldn't open this year. School Board President Christopher Miller explained that's when their team created a feasibility plan for the future. We had a fundraising committee we put in place, you know, raised 50 some thousand dollars in that throughout the year. And even recently, he said the commitment was there. So we raised nearly $500,000 in the course of a week. Tim Kaltenbach's daughter attends St. Monica's. We were fundraising, getting pledges. Um, we also paid extra tuition that they charged us for this school year so they could help for next year and this year as well. So it was, we were, the parents were doing as much as we could. Now both parents worry, what's next? Our families are going and have no idea what schools to, to go to, to reach out to. The diocese gave nothing. We thought things were going good. We were already ramping up for the next year and then now we have to start all over again. The church at St. Monica will remain open. Now, the school board president tells me there's a parent meeting here at the school on May 1st at 6 p.m. for parents to come together and see how they can move forward. Reporting live, Justina Cornell, 5 on your side. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker was on the Metro East today to push for his Health Care Protection Act, how he's going after insurance companies ahead. Plus, a local business owner is out thousands of dollars after a break-in. We have late-breaking news on the investigation. And after a cold morning, it looks like we're about done with the really cold air, but we're not done with severe weather season when our next opportunity for some stormy weather rolls around.